Welcome everybody to another high yield video with the 50 rapid review questions for your GU exam. These are high yield questions you will likely encounter during your exam and they will significantly help you with your scores. So you may encounter a first question, could be the last one, so paying attention all the way through the end can significantly help with your studies. So here we go, question number one. Which diuretic holds onto the calcium? So in the question stem, they're going to give you a patient and they're going to ask you about the medications and they're going to ask you to pick which one of these medications will hold the calcium and that is HCTZ. Uh, remember that loops, they dispose of calcium. Question number two, what is the most com common tumor causing SIADH? So they're going to give you a stem with the patient with the SIADH and they're going to tell you which one of these tumors is most likely causing this and the answer is small cell lung tumor. So small cell lung tumor is associated with SIADH. Number three, what is the most common cause of balanitis? balanitis? And that would be candida albicans. Candida albicans is the most common cause of balanitis. Number four, balanitis treatment for fungal causes. And that would be treated with clotrimazole 1%. Clotrimazole treats balanitis for fungal cause. Number five, what is BPH? BPH is prostate hyperplasia. This is enlargement of transitional zone, which leads to bladder outlet obstruction. So prostate hyperplasia. Number six, what is the most common cause of UTI? So you're gonna give you a stem uh, with the UA and you can point out that there's a UTI and they're gonna ask you which one of these bacteria uh, is most likely cause and that is E. coli. Number seven, what is the most common STI in the United States? That would be chlamydia. Number eight, for kidney stones, order which imaging test? So they're gonna give you a stem with a patient coming in. They're gonna tell you they have the flank pain that wraps around to the groin, um, maybe some blood in the urine. So fourth, you figure out this is a kidney stone. They're gonna ask you which one of these tests is the next best study ultrasound, MRI, CT, or x-ray, and the answer is CT without contrast, because the contrast can obstruct the stone. Number nine, inflammation of the glands penis is called what? And that is balanitis. All right, guys, for those of you that already subscribed to my channel, thank you very much. And for all of you that left those nice comments, I truly appreciate you. If you guys haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about these videos. And if you have time, check out the book that I put all of these questions in one book. It's about 4,000 questions just like this that will significantly help you with your scores. So do check it out. The book is on Amazon. It's only 20 bucks. And let's continue. Number 10, erectile dysfunction can occur with which heart medication? So they're going to give you a stem with a patient with, you know, prior medical history of hypertension. Uh, and they're going to list different medications and they're going to say which one of these medications is most likely cause of his erectile dysfunction. And that would be beta blockers. So beta blockers, erectile dysfunction. So one way to remember this, beta blockers block, blocks erection. So beta blockers cause erectile dysfunction. Kidney stones are mostly made up of what? They're mostly made up of calcium, where gallbladder stones are made from cholesterol. So they're gonna list calcium, cholesterol, something else. So calcium, kidney stones, gallbladder, cholesterol. Number 12, tea colored urine should make you think of what? And should make you think of hepatitis. So in the question stem, they're gonna tell you patient comes in, they may have jaundice, they may not, but somewhere in the stem, you're going to see T-colored urine reported. That should instantly make you think of hepatitis. Number 13. In asymptomatic individuals, the best initial test for evaluation of hematuria. So it says best initial test, not the final test. So sometimes you've got to pay attention to that in the stem. So best initial test for evaluation of hematuria is urine culture. Which tumor markers is elevated in testicular cancer. So they're going to give you a stem, patient comes in, uh, ultrasound or you know some other modality found testicular cancer and they're going to tell you which one of these markers is going to be elevated and the answer is serum alpha fetoprotein. So serum alpha fetoprotein associated with testicular cancer and is going to be elevated. 
Number 15, most common presenting area of prostate cancer. And that would be peripheral zone. So in this question stem, they likely list different zones. So known in peripheral zone is associated with the prostate cancer, most likely. What's a Wilms tumor? Well, Wilms tumor is unilateral renal mass seen in the children. It is the most common kidney tumor in children. So unilateral renal mass in a kid, Wilms tumor. 17. BUN creatinine ratio is greater than 20 to 1. This should make you think of pre-renal issue. So pre-renal greater than 20 to 1. If the GFR is 38, so somewhere in the stem they're going to tell you the labs came back, the GFR is 38, and they're going to ask you what is this stage in chronic kidney disease. So at 38, this would be the stage 3. So stage 1 is greater than 90, stage 2, 60 to 90, stage 3, 30 to 60, stage 4, 15 to 30, and stage 5 is less than 15. So GFR of 39 is stage 3. UA shows muddy brown cast. This should make you think of what? So if you see muddy brown cast in the UA, that is ATN, acute tubular necrosis. And the way I remember this, again, I advise you guys to create little stories and little mnemonic, little pictures in your head that instantly helps you recall the information fast. And the way I remember this is the muddy ATM does not work. So muddy ATM, ATM sounds like ATN. There's nothing else in a UA that is ATM. So ATN is the closest thing. So muddy ATM, no money. So muddy for muddy brown cast, ATM for ATM. I never forgot this. Risk factors for erectile dysfunction. So when it comes to the risk factors for erectile dysfunction, that could be hypertension, again, beta blockers, depression, could be psychological, could be coronary artery disease, or diabetes. So any one of these can be associated with erectile dysfunction. 21. When the penis is curved in the middle, this is called what? This is Peyronie's disease, and it's caused by the fibrous tissue. What's cystocele? Cystocele is a bladder prolapse, so the posterior bladder herniation into the anterior vagina. So they can also ask you which part of vagina does it prolapse to uh, herniate, uh, but no, that is anterior vagina. This is a bladder prolapse, and it's called cystocele. Which incontinence will have the high PVR? High PVR is associated with the overflow incontinence. Flank pain radiating to the groin. Think we already mentioned this. This is kidney stones, and we're going to see it without contrast. What is French sign? A French sign is pain relieved by elevating the scrotum. So patients going to come in. They're going to tell you they have testicular or you know private uh, area pain, and pain gets relieved by lifting their scrotum. So that is called French sign. Positive French sign should make you think of epididymitis. Epidermitis, friend sign. CVA tenderness should make you think of pyelonephritis. So this is when you tap on a patient's back, and as you tap it, they complain about tenderness, pain, so that should make you think of pyelonephritis. 28. What is stress incontinence? So known different incontinence is really high yield. Uh, known what is mostly associated with each will help you differentiate it on your testing day. So the stress incontinence is the urine leakage due to the increased intra-abdominal pressure. So they could say this patient has been diagnosed with the increased intra-abdominal pressure and which of these incontinence is most likely associated with this uh, finding and that would be stress incontinence. Urine leakage from sneezing or laughing. So the patient tells you they leak urine every time they sneeze or cough, uh, so that would be stress incontinence. Stress incontinence treatment is Kegels pelvic floor exercises. Overactive bladder is also known as urge incontinence. Urge incontinence, overactive bladder. Urge incontinence is due to what? is due to the Dieter's muscle overactivity. So they can tell you in a stem uh, something that points you to the urge incontinence and they're gonna ask you which one of these muscles is most likely involved. They're gonna list four different muscles. So know that Dieter's muscle 
over activity leads to urgent continence. So you can come up with a story, something like about Dietra's muscles, like Dietra, a name, has urgent continence. Urgent continence treatment is bladder training. Detrol or oxybutynin. Oxybutynin is the most commonly the one they'll test you on. So if you see oxybutynin patient, uh, patient taking oxybutynin, you should be thinking about uh, diagnosis of urgent continence. Underactive bladder will cause what kind of incontinence? So if the patient has underactive bladder, well, they're going to have the overflow incontinence. Overflow incontinence presentation. This will present with an increased post void residual, so PVR will be greater than 200 milliliters and they'll be dribbling. So if somewhere in the stem you see PVR greater than 200, that is overflow incontinence. Aldesterone works where? Aldesterone works in distal convoluted tubules, tubes. So with medications and the different parts of Mechanisms of action, kidney areas, so for this is easy to make a question about because all you got to do is list four different parts of kidney and ask you where does this work. So aldesterone, you know, it works in a distal convoluted tubes. Number 36, what's cryptochorditism? Crypto, cryptorchidism, crazy word. It is undescended testes. So if you see undescended testes, think cryptochorditism. And this can lead to complication of testicular cancer. Number 38. Most common cause of painless scrotal swelling. So patient gonna come in, they're gonna complain of the <coughs> sorry. Patient gonna come in, they're gonna complain about painless scrotal swelling, and they're gonna ask you what's the most common cause of this, and that would be hydrocele. So hydrocele, painless being a keyword in this scrotal swelling. Hydrocele treatment. Well, it's usually, there's not needed, uh, it's self-resolving. What's pimosis? Pimosis is inability to retract the foreskin over the gland's penis. So in the question stem, they're going to tell you patient comes in, they're unable to retract the foreskin, and they're going to ask you what is this condition called, and that is pimosis. What is parapimosis? Parapimosis is the foreskin can be pulled forward. This is emergency. So you try, a patient tries to pull the foreskin forward, but they are unable to. This is parapimosis, and this is emergency. Spermatic cord twist should make you think of testicular torsion. So testicular torsion, spermatic cord twist. And testicular torsion physical exam will show the negative friend sign and the absent charismatic reflex. So negative friend sign, Absent, chemisteric reflex, testicular torsion. Testicular torsion best initial test is testicular Doppler ultrasound. And you're going to see, you're just basically looking for a flow. So testicular torsion best initial test, testicular Doppler ultrasound, and will show decreased flow. Most common solid tumor in a young man, 15 to 4 years old. So again, the patient population and age can also help you differentiate between the answers to always select the right one. So if you see a young man 15 to 40, you should be thinking about testicular carcinoma. 46. Most common bladder carcinoma type. And that would be transitional cell carcinoma. Transition to bladder. Bladder carcinoma, I just think... If there's some kind of cancer involved in the bladder, I say that transition to bladder, so it just makes me think transition, transitional cell carcinoma. Diagnosis of bladder cancer. It is diagnosed with a cystoscopy, so looking into the urinary bladder with a biopsy. So cystoscopy, that's how you diagnose bladder cancer. 48, almost done guys, 48, complaining of the painless hematuria in an elderly smoker. So we're going to tell you in a step, this is a 60 year old male, history of, you know, 20 year pack history of smoking, and now they have this painless hematuria, and they're going to ask you what is the most likely finding, and that would be bladder cancer. So bladder cancer, every time when you see an elderly man with a painless hematuria. What's specific about bladder cancer? So bladder cancer is the most respond well to the treatment. However, it has the highest rate of recurrence of all cancers. 
So this is super high yield. They're going to tell you about different cancers. They're going to ask you of all these cancers, which one has the highest recurrence, and that will be the bladder cancer. Number 50, UA for chronic kidney disease will show what? The UA for chronic kidney disease will show broad vaccine casts. If you see broad vaccine casts in a UA, you should be taking chronic kidney disease. If you see the muddy casts, muddy ATM, ATN. So that is it, guys. Thank you again very much. Uh, check out all the other videos. I'm making a video for every class of didactic here and a video for every EOR. So check out a book. Smash that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Leave a comment. And I'll see you guys in the next video.